Now, I'm gonna make a quick confession. I'm a Red Sox fan. Yeah, I know, hate on me all you like, but I've had to deal with just as many last place finishes as I have World Series in my lifetime. One of the most important members of the 2004 team that broke the curse was a guy by the name of Kevin Millar. 2004 was easily the best season of his career, but there's something a lot of people forget. There's an alternate timeline where Kevin Millar is on a different team that broke a long-standing curse. Because by all rights, he should have been a Chunichi Dragon. Let's back up a bit. It's the winter of 2003. Longtime Dragon Leo Gomez had announced his retirement, and the Dragons have gone prospecting for a foreign player to replace him. They immediately set their sights on Florida Marlins outfielder Kevin Millar. Now, Millar himself has a fairly interesting story. Since he was a scab during the strike of 94, he was barred from ever joining the MLBPA, but he still managed to carve out a half-decent career, lasting far longer than many of the other scabs. For those of us growing up playing MLB Power Pros, we know him as the enigmatic and slightly euphemistic Great Johnson. This was a little odd because Millar was, well, good. He was one of the best hitters on the Marlins in 2002, but they had just signed Todd Hollinsworth, and Millar's backup position of first base was filled by Derek Lee, whose dad and uncle are both NPB legends. Millar agreed to a two-year deal with the Chunichi Dragons and was thusly DFA'd by the Marlins. Now, here's where things get messy. See, when a team in Major League Baseball wants to release a player, they must clear waivers. And there's a gentleman's agreement that exists between MLB, NPB, and KBO that basically says anyone who is DFA'd by an MLB club in order to join an NPB or KBO club will not be claimed off waivers by another MLB club. Well, guess what happened? The Red Sox claim Millar off waivers. So what happens next? Well, the Red Sox offered them Benny Ogbayani as compensation, but the Dragons refused. Millar wanted to join the Red Sox as well, but the Dragons refused. Why? That pesky two-year contract he'd signed. The Dragons basically went, you want him? We'll post him, and you're gonna have to pay us for the privilege. And this is where the MLBPA came in. Despite Millar being a scab and thus not a member of the MLBPA, they still saw an MLB player being refused his right to play in MLB by another club. This is of course ridiculous, Millar had signed the contract and the Red Sox had broken precedent by claiming him off waivers in the first place. But still, the MLBPA threatened to refuse to allow Seattle Mariners and Oakland Athletics players to go to Tokyo to play the opening series that year unless Millar was allowed to sign with the Red Sox. To avoid embarrassment, the MLB and NPB commissioners decided to step in and sort this out before it got even more out of hand. The Red Sox did agree to compensate the Dragons for an undisclosed amount of money and Millar signed a two-year deal with the Red Sox. Millar would apologize to Dragons fans and use the Iraq War as a handy excuse in a please ignore the 5.3 million dollars the Red Sox are giving me kind of way. The Dragons would sign Angels bench bat Alex Ochoa the day after they cancelled Millar's contract, and he'd go on to play for the Dragons for four years, putting up 10 war and winning a gold glove in the process. The Dragons made two Japan series with Ochoa, but lost both of them. Meanwhile, Benny Ogbayani would sign with the Chiba Marines in 2004 and would win the Japan series with them in 2005. Millar is one of the many what-ifs in Chunichi Dragons history. Could they have won the 2003 Central League pennant with him? Could they have won the 2004 Japan series with him? It's like all the what-ifs that surround Randy Bass and Ralph Bryant in 1988. We just don't know. Regardless, the Dragons still won the Japan Series in 2007, and finally broke that curse.